The title of today's message is How Did How We, did get, we here? get Here? How Did We Get Here? And I thought we like, could do that together, and that didn't, oh, we didn't one practice more time. that. The title of today's message is How, How Did We, we get, get Here? <laughs> how many of you would like to know how we got here? Yes. And how Epic Life came to be here? Well, this morning we want to share with you briefly just a few principles that have helped shape our lives and have also helped us as we planted and co-pastored Epic Life Church for the past eight years and counting and going and going. And, yes. Amen. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible says, and I will give you pastors, this was God talking, and these pastors are going to come from my heart and they're going to feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Yeah. So pastors are gifts because he says he's going to give us pastors after his own heart. Everybody say pastors are gifts. Pastors are gifts. Amen. So God has given pastors to us as gifts and he's called them to perfect us. We have pastors yes. and they perfect us and they and you know they're still working on us <laughs> to prepare us and to do what we need to do for the kingdom of God with the gifts and the abilities that we have. Having said that, here's some interesting facts and statistics about pastors. You want me to go ahead and go for it? I think you should just read it. Yes. Okay, we'll go People for it. People need to know, pastoring yes. is not easy. It's not it's easy. Hard. It's hard. Pastors and other ministry leaders are often under so much stress that they may find themselves just hanging on by a thread, about to burn out from exhaustion or blow out morally. Pastor stress today is enormous. The expectations that people put on their pastors and that pastors put on themselves, and I'm guilty of that, can be debilitating. Everywhere pastors go, they're expected to be on at all times. They're always on. When I'm driving with my Epic Life Church bumper sticker, a Windows decal on the back of my car, I now have to change my driving habits. <laughs> on the way to church, if you're behind me and you're going, look at that pastor or look at that church member of Epic Life, boy, I don't want to go to that church. He drives like really, really erratic. <laughs> That's going away in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Uh, but, but everywhere we go, they're expected to be on, ready to give stellar leadership, unending compassion, and inspiring message every single week, anointed prayer like we had today, and words of encouragement whenever you guys call us or text us or talk to us in the lobby. As we minister to others, we, become, we may become overstressed or depressed, or we may find ourselves feeling spiritually dry, tired of ministry, angry at God, stuck in our spiritual life, or even burned out. Many research studies have been done on pastors' stress, spiritual life, their marriage, and their family. The negative effects of ministry on the well-being of pastors and their families is probably due to a combination of stress overload yep. and inadequate personal soul care. So we've got some statistics to run by you on pastors' ministry and stress. You guys ready for this? This is, doesn't apply necessarily to us, but across the board, across America, across the country, this is what we found. 75% of pastors report being extremely stressed or highly stressed. 90% work between 55 to 75 hours per week. 90% feel fatigued and worn out every single week. 70% say they're grossly underpaid. 40% report a serious conflict with a member of their church at least once a month. Thank God we don't have that problem. <laughs> it's twice a month. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you stole my punchline. I'm so line. sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Gotta be quick. Gotta be quick. Okay, 80% will not be in ministry 10 years from now. That's, that's amazing. 80%. 80% will not even be in ministry 10 years from now. And only a fraction make it a lifelong career. On average, seminary trained pastors last only five years in church ministry. 70% of pastors say they have a lower self-esteem now than when they entered ministry. That's interesting. 70% constantly fight depression. 50% half feel so discouraged that they would leave their ministry if they could, but they can't find another job to replace it. 44% of pastors do not take a regular day off. 85% have never taken a sabbatical. <laughs> Everyone's like, what's a sabbatical? I'm a little depressed now. No. What's a a sabbatical? Sab sabbatical is like taking more than a week or two weeks off. I, we know of some pastor friends of ours. Yeah. They take the whole summer and they go to Europe. I think we're going to do that next year. That sounds pretty good. I'll go to Georgia. I don't care. I'll go anywhere. 
You know, these are the, re- we, we kind of went back and forth about, should we share this? Because it's not that we're trying to make you sad or, or make you feel you know, bad or guilty. It, it's to make you aware. Yeah. Sometimes we're just not aware. We don't always understand what pastors, leaders, people that have given their lives to ministry go through. How many of you have pastored or led a congregation or led in ministry before? You've had leadership experience and you understand, or maybe your parent, somebody you knew was a, was a pastor leader, you know firsthand what people go through, but most people don't know the stresses and the pressures. This doesn't even really touch the spiritual right. attacks that come against pastors. And I tell you that because as a family, because that's what we are, we're in community and we're family, you need to know that so that you can be praying. When I read statistics about how many pastors are not pastoring from 10 years from when they started, the biggest chunk, mm-hmm. that says to me that we need to care for pastors and leaders. Yes. We need to make sure we honor, love, support. It's so easy to tear them down. It's so easy to be to be that armchair quarterback where we're just critiquing. And, and, and so I thought I'll take Pastor's Appreciation Day to say a few things, to say thank you so much for making this house your home, your family, we, your pastors. Thank you so much for saying yes to the call of helping us build this church. Where we are is not what we see. Where we see God taking us in the next two to five years is way beyond this building, way beyond what we've seen in the last eight years. And we know that God's called us to greater things. So that means we've got to be prepared to hold each other up, to hold each other accountable, to hold one another in strength and support and pray for one another. Because when we're pushing forward, the enemy is creating even more opposition and resistance. So that's why it's so important. We don't become like the Twitter fingers, you know, or the, the the social media sidebar people that can just throw stones from the behind their screen. We need to be people that are supporting, uplifting, yeah. encouraging, Amen. and not just Pastor Dan and I, but those that you see leading. I, I was so appreciative to see some of our, our uh, people last week come up to our worship team and say, thank you for the way you led today. Amen. Thank you. That was so powerful. Thank you for you, just the way you sang that song. Those are the things that we need to be known for as a church. We need to be known for building one another up, not tearing one another down, because that's 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 really what happens. And the statistics may come across like everybody's burned out. We're not burned out. I hate those two words, burned out, because if you're burned out, that probably is a leadership problem and you're not leading well. That's what we've learned, is that if we're burned out, it's because we're doing too much. And, and we've got to uh, develop the people around us and build the people around us so that you can do more and yeah. take on more responsibility as leaders here at Epic Life Church. That's why we have our four core values that we teach at Growth Track. We have two weeks that we do Growth Track and you can come and be a part and learn um, our history and our government as a church and our culture as a church and serving here and what that means. What, what does that do? That helps us further the ministry, strengthen the ministry, go further. It's not five people doing the most, or they say, what, 80% of the work gets done by 20% of the people. 80% of the giving gets done by 20% of the people. I want our church to be known as the reverse. We're above average. And I believe that we are because the Bible talks about us being spiritually and emotionally healthy. And if that's anything if there's anything that I desire, it's that right there to be to be to to be uh, spiritually and mentally healthy. Ephesians chapter four tells us this. It says, "Now these are the gifts that God gave to the church." He says, "The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. These are all gifts, fivefold responsible gifts that we all have. They've got different giftings. They have." But really, they all have the same responsibility. We're all to edify. We're all to build up. We're all to encourage. If we've spent more time thinking negatively about a leader or about someone, we need to stop doing that. I love that video and be intentional about focusing on the things that we we ha- it's praiseworthy. That's what the Bible says. It's praiseworthy. So I know we're kind of skipping through some things because we're a little bit good. late, That's but. Good stuff. You know, I wanna, I wanna say a few things because it's so important that we know how much we need each other. You need a pastor in your life. You need the five-fold gifts in your life. You need teachers, apostles, prophets. You need people in your life. You need leaders. And sometimes we think that the greatest level of maturity is really is, is 
becoming kind of like interdependent. I can do it on my own. I can figure this out on my own. I don't really need a church body. I don't really need a church community. You know, we'll figure this out ourselves. But you need pastors in your life. You need a voice. You need it. Look at somebody and say, I need a pastor in my life. And, and we sometimes think that we can just live this life independently and on our own, but God, in his wisdom, showed us that the greatest level of maturity is interdependence. I need you. That's right. You need me. You're my brother. You're my sister. We need one another. Right. And here's an example. How many of you need air to breathe? <laughs> right? You need air to breathe. If you didn't raise your hand, then you're, you're, we need to check your pulse, or you've already ascended into heaven. You have your glorified body. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But here it is. We're dependent on the plant system. Without plants, we don't have oxygen because plants provide oxygen that we need air to breathe. We need water to drink. How many of you need water to, to drink to survive? So we're dependent on the rivers that cause this water to flow. And guess who provided rivers? This is not a trick question. God God provided, God did, and so he's created us to be interdependent. Somebody say interdependent. He's created us to be dependent on things. See, that's the thing. We want to find um, how we can figure this out on our own, but God created us to rely on one another, things outside of us. That's we right. need one another. Amen. I need you. You need me. Amen. We need you. We can't build a church without people. We can't build a church without leaders. And those are the things that God has called us to. They're giftings that's been provided for the body of Christ. And one of those giftings is the pastor. Amen. It's called the pastor. Amen. That's good. That's good. Give it up for Pastor Martha. That's great. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. We, we said the title of our message is, How Do We Get Here? And some of you know a little bit about the backstory of our church and how Pastor Martha and I met, but we would just briefly want to go over that really quick. For those of you that haven't, I want to share our story with you and briefly touch on a few principles, like I mentioned earlier, that have helped shape our lives. Um, and helped us along the way as we planted and co-pastored our church. Just to provide a little background of myself, my dad, father, my father, Dominic Minizzi, uh, was born in Sicily. He migrated to America in 1946 at the age of nine. I'm the son of an immigrant or migrant, however you want to say it. Uh, first generation American on my dad's side. How many did not know that about me? So quite a few. Amen. I know, dad never spoke, to learn, uh, taught me the language, though, because that was their secret language between mom and dad. When, when they didn't want us to know what they were talking about, they'd speak in Italian, so they never taught us. I'm still kind of mad about that a little bit. But he came to this country at the age of nine with five bucks in his pocket, maybe, I don't know, five cents in his pocket, nothing. But the, the clothes on his back, uh, the oldest of nine children. Um, and dad and mom were married in 1961 and were married for 61 years. Amen. Until dad, dad went home to be with the Lord last year and he's in heaven looking down on us right now. Dad, we love you. We love you, dad. We're going to see you soon. And um, until, the time of his, until the time of his transition to heaven last year, mom and dad had four kids. I was the oldest of four. That explains a lot. For the those, oldest, I'm um, yes. the firstborn. You know, there's, there's certain character traits and personality traits that go along with being firstborn. Some are good, some are not so good. A little bossy. We, we try to. A little we, bit bossy. We try to. We try to focus on the good. <laughs> leave behind the bad. How many firstborns? Any, bossy. I mean, oh, uh, wow. firstborns. Okay. okay. Got See, it. Awesome. We got to stick together, guys. Come on. There's more about them than there are of us. But I am the oldest, and our mom and dad they raised us to love God to love our country, and to never be afraid of hard work. Amen. My dad was a general contractor for over 60 years. He put the first hammer in my hand, put a hammer in my right hand, put a paintbrush in my left hand. Yes. Hammer, paint, hammer, paint. How many guys are in construction? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. In between, you get the caulking gun and do the caulking. All right. Moving on. All right. <laughs> Growing up in an Italian household, honor and respect was always taught, exemplified, and instilled in us from an early age. And growing up in the Munizzi household, church, attending church was a non-negotiable, never an option, and the door, we, always, we were always at church and the doors were always open. Right. And the Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, to start your children off on the way they should go. This is important for parents, for those of you that are going to be parents and are young parents. 
Start them off in the way they should go. And even when they're old, they will not turn from it or they will not depart from it. And one of the most important areas that my dad and my mom influences us was to love God and to love his word. I was born in Queens, New York, 61 years ago. 61 years ago in County, that's right. Your pastor, Dan, is over 60 years old, believe it or not. You're supposed to say we don't believe it. I was blessed to be raised in church from the time I was an infant. I was dedicated to the Lord at several weeks old. My father was a worship leader. Mom was the piano player in every church that we ever attended. My mom was a gifted singer and pianist. She taught me how to play the piano. And in turn, that I went from the piano to the bass and so on and so forth. My parents were always involved in our home church and every level of ministry. And as the oldest of four children, I developed my music abilities growing up in church, I'm trying to speed read, and, and playing several different instruments in worship bands with my siblings. I've been in ministry for most of my life, and my parents made, church, made sure that church was a priority in my life. And when I was nine years old, I walked the aisle to, to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, just uh, two miles from here at Full Gospel Assembly. And um, uh, that was in 1971, and that moment changed my life forever. How did Pastor Martha and I meet? Okay, this is on everybody's minds. I know you guys are wondering, some of you guys are, how in the world did God put these two together that are so different, but yet are so alike? Is that good? All right. <laughs> well, we met doing what God called us to do. Yeah. We met doing what God called us to do. A, a mutual friend of ours was putting together a worship band. I had played bass guitar at the time. My brother played drums. Pastor Martha and her twin sister, Pastor Mary, were the singers in the band, and that's how we met. Through a mutual friend of ours, he introduced us um, to do that, Pastor, we're a twin sister. Three years later, in 1987, we got married, and five years later, we started our family with Danielle. She was our firstborn. The first 15 years of our married life, as Pastor Martha mentioned, I was a home builder. I built several hundred homes here in Central Florida. I think they're all still standing. We also helped build churches. We helped plant several new churches here in the Orlando area and also served on the worship teams. One of the churches that we helped plant in Orlando grew very quickly. We served at that church for eight years as worship leaders. We helped build the music team, large choir. While we were there, we wrote many worship songs and recorded multiple albums. After eight years there, we started feeling like our season was over. God said, this is time to go. And he wasn't the only one to say it was time to go. Our pastor told us it was time to go. <laughs> That's why it's important to have pastors in your life, because yes. sometimes they'll be in tune to, to what God has for your life before God reveals it to you, or you might not be in tune to what God's saying, but your pastor, your shepherd, uh, uh, knows what's best and wants what's best for you. And he told us, if you don't go now, you're going to miss your window yeah. of opportunity. And we're so yeah. glad. Yes. At the time, we didn't understand it, but now we're so glad that he did that and released us to do that. So the first 15 years we traveled uh, all over the world. We, uh, Pastor Martha's been honored to have her music nominated for Grammy Awards, Dove Awards, Stellar Awards. And, uh, but around the year 2012, we started feeling the call and feeling like God had more for us. And we started praying about our next assignment, what that would be. So after 15 years of traveling, we felt called by God yeah. to establish a place where those seeking fulfillment in life feel like they belong. How many want to feel like they belong somewhere? Yes. Well, we wanted to build that place for you. God began to birth a desire in our hearts to plant our very own church in Orlando, and Pastor Martha and I, along with our three amazing children, like I mentioned before, we dove right in and uh, officially launched our church in 2015. Amen. We just celebrated our eight-year anniversary shortly. We started with just a handful of people and a big dream. We didn't want to start a church that was like some of the churches we've been to, but we wanted something fresh, we wanted something new, and we wanted to make sure that people were really discipled yeah. so that they could grow and mature spiritually. Along the way, some people did not want to be discipled and they're no longer with us. <laughs> but that's another story for another day. We, we, I'm sorry, edit. We wanted to help strengthen marriages and restore broken relationships and see families healed. We wanted to help people find God, discover your purpose, yeah discover why they were put on this earth, and to fulfill God's plan for their lives. That's why we call it Epic Life Church. Right. Yeah. Amen? We want you to experience your purpose in life. Amen? In Christ. Experience your purpose in Christ. 
And that's and here we are today in October of 2023, celebrating over eight believe. years in ministry. And that's where we came from. That's how we got here right to this point right now. That's good. Was that good? Was that a quick synopsis? Quick synopsis, okay. Well, I'm gonna do something very quickly because it's a little bit late and we still have something to do. I'm gonna walk through, I know you mentioned at the top, just very quickly some principles that we've lived by that got us to where we are today. Not only with our church, but our marriage, our family, not that we're perfect, we have conflict, we have things we have to work through daily, but we've learned to be kind of transparent about those things, probably a little too transparent, because we wanna help you. That's our desire, is to help you grow, build a church where you feel you belong, that there aren't secrets and that we don't walk around pretending like we're perfect and you'll never live up. That's not the kind of life that we we live and that's not what we want to, to uh, portray to you. So there are some principles that we've learned over the years. I'm gonna just go through these real quickly if that's okay. That's One of the things that we've lived by that have, we built our life on, and it's, it's really not you know, a deep word, it's just a simple word, but that word is faithfulness. Amen. We have built our marriage, our family, our finances, our church life, our ministry, our spiritual giftings. we've built them on faithfulness. The Bible tells us in Luke 16, 10, verse uh, through 12, it says, one who is faithful in very little is also faithful in much. But one who is, unf uh, who, did, am I read that right? One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. Amen. And Amen. one who is dishonest in very little is also dishonest in much. If, you, if then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? The Bible says in Proverbs 28, 20, a faithful man will be abound with blessing. So we see how important faithfulness is to God. He wrote about it. Faithfulness is important. If you want to abound with blessing, yes. You need to be faithful. If you want God to give you more than what you have, you need to be faithful. I've gotta be faithful so that God can trust me with more. If I allow bitterness or pride or self-pity or just a apathy or, or anything to keep me from being faithful, I'm gonna miss out on my blessing. And I can tell you through the years, I've almost missed out on my blessing. But if you'll be faithful, faithfulness will open doors for you. Amen. Faithfulness will bring blessing. Yeah. It will open doors to increase and favor, just being faithful. That's it. Not being perfect, not being the most spiritual person in the room, not being the most gifted or talented, right. just being faithful, just showing up. That's good. It That's will good. get you more than sometimes people that have all the wealth, have all the talent, but you they're not faithful. How many of you would hire somebody that was not faithful? How many of you would marry somebody that was not faithful? I hope you wouldn't. Hope you, hope you wouldn't trust somebody with your stuff that's not faithful. Being faithful is important to God and it's important to us. And being faithful in a community of believers and attending church faithfully will set you up for increase. Amen. And I know we work, I know things happen, I know we're not always here to be, you know, every single week, we can't be here all the time, but when we make it a priority to be here more than when we're not here, I'm telling you, that, just that will get you further down the road. I'm telling you, it's true. Right. Amen. Sometimes we, as human beings, we gravitate to making things harder than they, we complicate everything. We think that can't be enough. There's got to be more. Yeah. That can't be enough to get me what I'm asking God. No, it's faithfulness. Ask your spouse if faithfulness is important. That's right. Ask your, ask your children. Ask the, your boss. if they, that, that check, man, you worked and that check comes. Faithfulness is important and we need faithfulness in relationships because what will happen is we can, we can start out faithful and then we get hurt somewhere along the way and then we miss kind of appropriate, appropriate or miss, you know, a apply something and because we're hurt we stop being faithful that's right because we're feeling you know self-pity we stop being faithful but we're missing out on the the blessing and the seed that we planted when we were faithful i've seen more people uproot right when god was trying to challenge them Come on. i've seen people just uproot and that's move right. on right. and not everybody that has moved on from our church or others church left with, you know, wrong. Some people left because they moved or they just felt like God was moving them somewhere else. Right. There's no hard feelings, but we've seen it over and over throughout our ministry. Right. People will just uproot and 
move on because they just did not understand the seeds of faithfulness that they had sown. Yeah. And they just got upset. They got prideful. They hurt. Whatever it was, misunderstood, repeated a cycle, and they just uprooted. How many of you know we just finished a series on emotions? Yeah. And, and if we're not careful, we will allow pride or other areas to uproot us when we're about to experience the blessing of faithfulness. That's so good. Amen. And let me just say this. If I don't say anything else, I think this is important because we've got about three minutes and we got to wrap it up. But let me just say this really quickly. If we don't understand, another word we're going to talk about is loyalty. Loyalty is important. We need to understand how loyalty is important. There's so many things in our lives that we may have to just share this another time, but, but faithfulness, loyalty, just commitment to what God's called us to do. Stay in it. Don't give up. Don't quit. Yes. Don't just walk out because it was, it was easier to walk out than to stay in the fight. Because here's the truth, and I think this is the nugget for today. God will bring people. This is why you need pastors. Yeah. Because God, God will bring strong people into your life to help you be strong. That's right. How many of you have ever gotten stronger in an area where you allowed somebody weak in that area to help you? No, God will bring strong people. Right. And sometimes our pride does not, doesn't, doesn't like it. And it'll cause us to, to kind of uproot when God's calling us to be faithful. But if we'll say, I'm staying, that's my pastor, that's my church, right. come higher, hell or high water, God called me here, I'm not going anywhere. That's right. Amen. We're gonna have conflict. I'm gonna get stronger because of it. But you are, the, I think Jim Rohn says, great mentor coach, life coach. He says, you are the sum total of the five people that you surround yourself with. That's right. And if you surround yourself with the wrong people, you're going to go down the wrong path. It'd That's be good. better that you were just you and your church family and you're kind of lonely when it comes to friends. Find your friends in the community. Find your friends among the leaders. I'm telling you, even if God will bring, he's faithful, he'll bring the right people into your life. Right. He might take you through a season where you're like, man, I want more friends, I want more relationships. And they're gonna come because you're being faithful. But what will happen is God, when you ask him to elevate you, when you ask him to strengthen you, he won't bring somebody weak, he'll bring somebody strong. That's right, every time. He'll bring somebody to challenge you. He'll bring you somebody that'll hold you accountable and call you out on some things. That's right. If I wanted to say, I'm going to get in shape, I'm going to the gym, which I've said hundreds of times, and I still haven't done it, it would be so easy for me to just pick friends who will go, let's just go to Chick-fil-A. Let's just go this, to Shake Shack and get us some French fries and a double with cheese. Like, let's, it would be so easy to surround myself with people who are weak in the areas I'm weak. Yeah. It's hard to say, no, I'm going to hire a trainer. I'm going to get people around me that'll go get up at 6 a.m. Let's, let's do what we said we were going to do. That's the only reason I've not joined a gym. Not because it's the money... <laughs> Not because I got to get up, because I know somebody's going to yell at me and say, why did you eat that? Come on. Why did you do that? Why didn't you do it? Come on, 10 more. Come on. 15, you got more in you. Yes. And that's what pastors do. They spur you on to good works. Yes. They'll say, don't trip over that. No, don't, don't listen to your kids. Don't listen to the negative people. Right. God's, you've planted and you're faithful and you're about to see seed. Yes. If you but we'll get to a place where we won't grow and strong people will repel them. People that were called to bless us, people that were called to strengthen us, people that were, I could preach right there, oh, but we, we push back because there's a challenge. It hurts, uh, it hurts our flesh a little bit. It's uncomfortable to let somebody tell me, you know, wait a minute, that's, that's not what you said you wanted. Why are you doing that? Hold me accountable. I've got to choose that. Amen. I've got to choose it. So Amen. God's got a promotion for me, but I've had to learn that in order to receive the blessing God has for me, I've got to lay down pride. I've got to lay down self-pity, yeah. and I've got to stay faithful even when it hurts my pride. That is a good word. That's a great word. We just got a couple other things we want to share. I think it's important that we cover those other three ones as well, just real Do briefly. It. But you know, you and I have had our share of disagreements. Surprise. Surprise. Firstborn. Firstborn. Lastborn. But you and I have had our share of disagreements. Amen. Yes. Just a few along the way after 36 it's years of marriage. It's always the same issue. Yeah, it is. Right? I, Married people, it's like the same it thing. Keeps you just raising its never ugly, something ugly new. head. It's like, um, because there are areas that you are stronger than me in yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. And I've had to learn that in order to receive the blessing and promotion right. God has for me, like you said, yep. I've got to lay down pride. And men, we have the biggest problem and the biggest challenge with pride. Amen, men? Amen. 
I mean, because we like to be... <laughs> there's one. There's one. <laughs> there's one honest man in the house. <laughs> but it's true. God, the way God made men, he made us to be proud in our accomplishments and proud for what we do. We like to sit back and say, hey, you know what? I got this done I, and it was accomplishment. But we lay that down and even our kids, parents, how many times have you had your kids address you about some weak areas in our lives? I had that happen to me this week. I did. I had that happen to me this week, and our kids said, you know what, Dad, there's a couple of areas that you are working on. We appreciate you know, your effort, but you're not there yet. <laughs> and that's the nice version. <laughs> that's the nice kind yeah, synopsis. That's the PG version. Um, but no, it, was, it wasn't. Uh, and it's true. It was true. What they said was true. You know, when you first hear it as a man, and, uh, you know, as a 61-year-old man especially, you're like, wait, wait a second now. You guys are, you're still my kids. <laughs> Who are you to tell me? But you know what? God has put every person in your life for yes. a reason. And you need to be uh, uh, thankful for the, the people that God has put in your life, especially your family. That's right. Because your family will keep you straight. They'll set you straight. They'll keep you straight more than anybody else will. And we don't like it sometimes because it stings. It hurts. Yeah. But truth sets you free. Amen. The Bible says Come that. On. The truth will set you free, but it's not just the truth that you set will, will set you free. The Bible says it's the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. You have to know the truth before you get set free. Little caveat right there. But it will make you mad first. Yes. Amen. So the Bible says pride goes before a fall. Pride is the root of a lot of our problems, and we have to let strong people, i.e. pastors, leaders, into our lives to challenge that. If you find yourself or the people around you repeating patterns and rejecting people, and getting offended easily, how many guys get offended easily sometimes? Then that's an area where pride has not been dealt with. That's so right. being faithful to your beliefs, commitments, and relationships means being steadfast in your devotion to them. Faithful people are true to their word. That's how many right. like people that be true to their word? When they tell you something, they do it. That's what faithfulness is all about. Faithful people are true to the word, their promises, their beliefs, and commitments. And as a result, they're dependable, trustworthy, and honest and they can be counted on in good times and bad. That's what we want for you guys. You want those qualities and characteristics to be a part of who you are. And when people walk away saying, you know, Joe and Frank and Tom and Mary, they're that. They're That's dependable, right. they're faithful, and I can count on them come hell or high water. Amen? And loyalty is another thing we've built our ministry on, our family. Yes. Loyalty, it builds trust. It means having the ability to commit, stick with something, even through difficult times. Stickability. And it helps form relationships. Loyalty creates security. Loyalty establishes good character. Yes. Consistency is another one. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. Because the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So when we abide, that means we're enduring with, uh, to endure without yielding, to continue in a place, to remain stable or consistent. It, and spiritual consistency develops routine. It builds momentum. And that's what we've had to do over the years in our music ministry, with our family, in, in our church. It's that loyalty. It's consistency. You just stay doing it. Keep doing it. Right. You're going to see the fruit, that's right? right. Keep doing it. It's the power of consistency that will make a difference. And there's going to be days you might not feel like doing it, but, but consistency emphasizes faith over experience. Say that again. Consistency will say, I, I, I'm going to emphasize my faith over what I'm experiencing. I might be bored. I might be tired. Yes. I might feel defeated, Amen. but I'm going to keep going because I'm developing a spiritual practice yes. that's going to pay off. Faithfulness, commitment, yes. consistency, loyalty, and that, that's what has made a difference in our lives. And so we wanted to bring those things to you today and just encourage you a little bit. This was kind of like unplugged. Yes. Pastors unplugged, unplugged a little bit. That's right. But we, we know that sometimes when you're, you know, attending or when you're serving or when in your marriage and in your life, it kind of feels like, man, you know, it's the same thing. I wake up every day and there it's the same day. I'm telling you, you're going to see and we're going to see at Epic Life Church just the the 
faithfulness, the hand of God, when it comes to being faithful, when God shows up and puts, remember we talked about, he puts his seventh hand on our hand. When he puts that power, that ability, that strength on our efforts, yes. before you know it, the doors are, are just packed and we don't know what to do. We, God, you're going to have to help us because we got to blow walls down or find a new spot or, and there's just people coming and we're about to hit, I believe, yes. that season of ministry in our church. Amen. I believe we already have Amen. of overflow and I believe that Amen. that's so important for us. Amen. 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 Let me touch on integrity. You can. We, we got yes. The last but not least is it's integrity. Integrity. How many like to have more integrity in your life? Yes. How many like to hang around people that are integrous? Yes. According to scripture, the true gauge of a man's integrity is his heart. Yeah. The world evaluates a person's integrity from what it sees in man's outward behavior. God judges integrity from what he sees in his man's heart from inside, for every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Yeah. But the Lord pondereth the hearts, and there's several scriptures on here that would talk about integrity. And you know, not many of us would disagree that our world would be a better place if people lived with integrity. The damage caused by a lack of integrity today is seen everywhere we look. And uh, that's what we wanna stress on having integrity. Lack of integrity also hits close to home. I know we're running out of time. But, but what I just would say about yeah, please, integrity, please do. 36 years, you know, we've been married, and again, We've worked together every day. We've traveled together. We are. We wake up and we're we're both focused on the same things all day, every day. We have different ideas about how things could get done sometimes, or the timing of things. And we've had to learn how to walk through those things every single day. And we've never. There's never been. There's nothing in our past, our history. We walk together. We're committed to marriage. We're committed to our family. We're committed to this church. And we want you to know that, that we value integrity in our lives behind the scenes above all else. Yes. The people that we add to our church, integrity. The yes. people that we put on our team, not perfection, but integrity. And that's important for you to know. You don't ever have to worry. You might every once in a while go, I don't really like their style of leadership. Right, right. You may not like our, you know, maybe in a moment of humanity, we might react or something. You might not like that, but you you can go to sleep at night knowing that behind the scenes, your money is taken care of. Right. We're being very, we're being very frugal with your money. She, we're making sure as, that as we're she, faithful. As she pats my shoulder. Right, faithful. No, it's seriously, good it's stewards of what God has given us. We've yes. got money in the bank. We're not in debt as a church. Right, we are debt-free church. Come on. Debt-free, amen. You need to know that. That's because of your giving and your faithfulness, and amen. Because, and because we've been faithful with what God's brought us, and we take it very seriously. When, when money's being set, spent, Pastor Dan will say, we've got to, this is God's precious people who give and they're giving because God's, God told them to give, but we've got to make sure that we are good stewards of what God's given us. So integrity is important. So faithfulness, loyalty, consistency, integrity, all of these things are the things that built us. That's how we got to where we are. How did Amen. we get here? Yes. That's how. That's it right there. That's how. And if you'll build your life on that, you're going to be surprised at what one year will look like from now, two years, five years, yeah. what your family, your finances, your future will look like if you'll build your life on the principles of God. How many of you are blessed today? It's a little different, right? Amen. We just want to pray for you and believe that God is building you as you were encouraged today and maybe educated about some things that God will just allow that to be a seed in your heart that you'll begin to think about and what part can you play to strengthen the body. Father, I just thank you so much for everyone sitting in this room, everyone watching online. God, you you gave us the strength. You put grace in us, strengthen us, the anointing in us so that we could be faithful when, when we wanna give up. We, we could be consistent and loyal. It's not because of strength that we have. It's not because of our righteousness that we can have integrity. It's because of your strength, your anointing in us, your power that works on the inside of us. So that means that when we're weak, you're strong, but it also means that there's a greater power work on the inside of, side of us. So we don't have to lean to, to our own understanding. We can always lean to you when we feel like, man, we've not been faithful enough. We've not been loyal enough. We've not done enough. God, even in that moment, there's power that's working on the inside of us that if we'll be faithful, yeah. faithful in the little, faithful to commitment and, and church family and our home life and our finances, God, you reward faithfulness. Yes, God. Thank you for Epic Life Church. I thank you for eight years. I thank you for just being a pastor of this great church. 
And God, there's so much more ahead of us, but God, our desire is to be great leaders that lead your people into the calling of God that you have for them. Yes. And we just thank you that you're blessing every family. You're blessing our church. You're taking us into new dimensions, new levels. Father, new anointings. And we just thank you, God. You're sending more people. You're sending leaders that will help us carry the vision into the future. So we pray for strength in our families, strength in our finances in every area of our lives. Pray we would be people who are faithful. We'd be consistent. We'd be loyal and we'd be people of integrity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Just one more prayer. And, and I wanna pray this for anyone in the room that maybe you've never made Jesus your Savior, your Lord, never given Him everything. I wanna know if there's anybody. If you just continue to pray with me for just a moment, bow your heads, close your eyes. You may be watching online and you could put it right there in the comments. I gave my heart to Jesus today, but maybe you need to surrender your life. Maybe you've been running from God, running from the life that you know you could live if you would surrender to Jesus. Jesus said today's a day of salvation. Yes. And if you'll lay your life down for the cause of Christ, you will find even greater life. And that's what Jesus offers. He, he, he offers forgiveness of sins. He offers a brand new start and eternity with him in heaven. Today, you're here and you know, I need forgiveness of sins. I need to know that if I walked out here today and my life ended, that I would spend eternity with Jesus. If that's you today and you would say, would you pray for me? I wanna make sure that I know Christ, my sins are forgiven, and my eternity is sealed in heaven. Would you raise your hand? Is there anyone in this room that would say, pray for me? I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Come on, lift it up. Is there anyone? Just lift your hand, yes. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Come on, I want us to pray this prayer together. We're gonna celebrate in just a moment, but just pray this prayer, all of us together. Say, dear Jesus, today I come to you, and I need forgiveness of sins. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Today, I receive you as my Lord. I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, if you believe you're a son, a daughter of heaven, come on, let's give God the praise. Let's give Him praise, amen.